Okay, so for your information today, we are going to talk about um, draftmanship. So I'm going to show you a bunch of slides. I've already uploaded this uh, on e-learning, so you can use it. Uh, you can refer to it. You can download it now if you want, and then you can refer to it while uh, I give you a bit of a input and lecture on draftmanship. Okay, so uh, before we begin, I would like to know any um, how many of you have actually done draftmanship before? Uh, this includes uh, architectural draftmanship, architectural drawings, uh, lukisan kejuruteraan, engineering drawings uh, in SPM, or that sort of uh, drawings. So apart from me, who will be teaching you about draftmanship, you have some friends here who have had experience, who have had experience before and you can use them as additional reference, okay? So, kalau you tak jumpa, if, if let's say I, I got into an accident and I can't meet you guys online, go hunt these people down, okay? They volunteer their names there. Fatisha, Rashid, Suhaimi, Kasturi, and Zakudin. Good luck. Okay, now let's go into the uh, draftmanship slides. Okay, on screen you will see a draft, uh, sorry, a presentation drawing. Okay, this is my friend. This is done uh, by my friend, uh, his company. It's called Session Design. So my friend is Ramesh, Ramesh, Ramesh Session. So this is one of his design quite recently in SS3 Petaling Jaya. So this is a house. Okay, so as you can see, this is not just a normal house. You can see it by the four uh, park cars on the left side on the porch so this is going to be very big house very expensive you can see the swimming pool you can see that uh, the arrangement of the house is quite unique quite unusual hold on sorry i forgot to switch on my pointer there is a pointer okay so the four houses uh, sorry the the four vehicles so ada empat buah kereta park kat sini look at that opening okay it's it's a big house and then you enter, this is the entrance, okay? Door swings to the right. This is the entrance and generally the lobby. And you can see straight, which is the dining area. And then beyond that, you have a study area, which overlooks the swimming pool. So this would be a very interesting layout. So imagine you and your brothers and sisters and your dad and parents and you sitting in the study area studying doing your homework while overlooking swimming pool that's a very nice setup okay and then uh to the side also dining room you can also overlook to the swimming pool and you can have a small garden or gathering area this could be uh, an extended dining area so you can have a place where you can sit uh, for tea and something like that oh before i forget this is also the living area which is different from the TV room. So living area, you can invite your guests, your friends, and then you can hang out here. You've got one TV there, but you've got another TV room down here um, where you can you know, enjoy in a smaller room and you can see how this is enclosed. So it is much easier to air condition this room. Okay. So you won't waste uh, too much power, especially if you're just alone. You can just switch on an aircon and this room will be uh, cozy. And of course you have your guest bathroom here and also powder room. <clears throat> uh, on this side, there's a wet kitchen. Okay, This is the dry kitchen, and then this is the wet kitchen. And you have a laundry area, which is, this is the maid's room. Okay, That is basically uh, a slightly uh, separated area from the rest of the room. Okay, So for the maid's room, maid's bath and all that, it is basically on this side. Okay. And also they have another bathroom, bath two from the outside. This is specifically for the swimming pool. So you got a shower on this side. So after, before you go in or after you go into the swimming pool, you shower first and then you go to the bathroom. You don't have to enter the house while you are wet. Okay, if you want to go to the toilet and so on. So there's a lot of thought that have been given in this particular uh, house. And one of the key things that you need to understand is by looking at this can you understand the elements that are presented in this particular drawing so you see here presentation drawings are actually a set of documents that forms a part of agreement between the architect and the client so we use this particular set of drawing 
to tell the client that oh this is how you, your house is going to be um this is how big the kitchen is going to be uh, this is where you're going to wash your dishes you got window in front of you and this is where you cook and this is your uh, fridge and so on and so forth so the client would be able to understand this and they can actually respond so i don't want the uh the sink on this side can you put it on this side and then we can agree because as architects we tailor suit to whatever the the client needs let's say the client say okay i i have five cars i need five cars to be fit in here not four and then you as the architect have to figure out where do i put the other car okay so by using this set of drawings you can communicate to the client and the client can respond and can communicate back to you. Usually presentation drawings can also be presented in color. So sometimes there's a proper rendering. I mean, architects love to render to make it really uh, appealing. And this is particularly important for all because uh, for all people, especially those who are not uh, well versed in architectural drawings, because they need to see, they need to feel the spaces. Almost uh, no one have ever looked at a particular building from plan, except for architects and Bumbu. Okay, so uh, sorry, uh, except for people in the built environment and also Bumbu. Okay, and normal people they they do not look at the building at the interiors from plan. They will look in three D space. So we'll get to that a bit later. So this is the presentation drawing that we use to communicate a particular a set of information for the client okay now we also produce another set of drawing which is okay, which is the construction drawing okay so construction drawing this is the same drawing um, uh, as the one that we that i showed before but there's a lot of different information in here okay as you can see there are some red lines which is the boundary lines okay and then you have the setback line setback line uh line uh is a uh, is an area where you cannot build anything in it okay so your walls cannot go into the setback line so you cannot go beyond this red line so in this particular piece of drawing, going back to this, uh, this is a construction drawing. You can have a lot more information here. You can see that there are labels uh, like W01 and D03. This is basically window type one. Okay, this is window W for window, D is for door. So this is type one. This is window type 13. This is window type 15. So you can already figure out that there are about what 18 types of windows um, that are used in this house so it's not one the same window everywhere it's just different 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 windows okay so how many uh, windows type one that we can find this is window type one this is window type one so and then we have window type uh, 12a and we do type 12 i'm not sure what the difference are usually we have another sheet of uh, detailing that will explain what is 12 what is 12e and so on and so forth this is like a huge piece of catalog okay uh, of windows that will explain what is window 1 to window 17 or 18 the same with doors it's called window schedule and also door schedule so we're not going to cover that one that one you will cover i think around uh, third year okay so in this particular piece you can see all the other informations like dimensions Okay, look at that, 6425, 3900, 1950, okay, and so on and so forth. You can also see uh, the dimensions on this side, and there are some detailing on the dimensions. There are more numbers here, plus 1.45, plus 1.3, plus 1.3, okay, and so on. Okay, so what do these mean? Okay, these are all information that we need, uh, that we need to relay to other consultants. For example, landscape architect. So landscape architect will need to, to do the landscaping for this entire area. So this is the drainage. So he or, he or she would know that, okay, let's not get into the drainage. He or she, uh, the landscape architect will also need to know where the garden tap is and then how far back 
do they want to do the landscape and so on and also electrician electrician would like to know if um, how how many how many devices will they have in this particular room yeah, for example this is tv room so what else are you going to have in here um, the playstation or whatever console are you going to have astro are you going to have a double tv triple tv uh, is it going to have a home theater system is it going to be surround and all the electrical bits have to be uh, maintained by the electrical engineers so they need to figure out where to put the switch uh, the switch and where to put the power points plug points and so on so if we go back to this okay it's much simpler just have all the basics they understand sometimes they give you dimensions okay there are some dimensions given here 5775345050 and so on some basic dimensions so that they get an idea of how big or how small this this going to be but in here you get all the door types window type and so on and so forth so they don't need to kill themselves over trying to figure out what w01 means or what d11 means so you can see that dry kitchen is 1.45 and laundry is 1.375 you know it's but one step lower so that's you that's where you know that this kitchen, the dry kitchen and the wet kitchen are at the same height but the wet kitchen and the laundry is at different height so laundry is a bit lower okay so you see laundry and maids room is same height but maids bath is even lower than that okay uh, for arman all in mm yes good question what is the measurement here? So everything is in millimeters. So you can see here on the bottom, 450 mm. So one of the things that we we must be must understand is that when you want to do a scale drawing, you have to use the same measurement all the time. And for architects, we always use millimeter. Okay, it's always millimeter. So 1950 mm. So 2900 mm. So 2,900 is how many meters? 2.9. Okay. So we just uh, divide by 1,000. So 3.025 meters. This is 3 meters. This is 1.5 meters. And so on. Okay. Okay. Drafting tools. Okay. Before you produce elaborate and detailed drawings about your design, uh, students, you guys must familiarize yourself with common drafting tools available. Here are typical tools that I use. Okay, uh, please note that some of these are critical, um, some of these are essential, and some are optional. So it is totally up to you. One by one. So first, um, you're going to need A2 drafting board. A3 is fine as well. Okay, I I don't think there is an A4 drafting board. But A2 drafting board is the one that I have. Uh, it's portable enough. A1 is a bit too big. So if you can find this, um, I think you can buy this online uh, the a2 board you can buy this online or if you don't have this you need to find a table that has a perfect edge okay that is perfectly straight so that you can work your parallel bar or t square on the edge okay so you can't have a rounded table or table with a crooked edge or something like that. you need some a table whether on the left side or the right side okay. for the left is the, the left side of the t-square is basically if you're right-handed if you're left-handed then the t-square it will be on the right side okay so this is your drafting board and some drafting boards are basically just a plain uh plain timber board uh, mine has a specific layer which basically makes it very smooth chain makes it very smooth so you can easily paste your drawing so you don't have any um, you know textures on the background so they can do hatching nicely okay so this is an a2 board okay buckets then we have the t square or parallel bar okay this is very important uh, like i said you need this uh, a nice edge of that particular table so that it can place your um, t square on the side this needs to be uh, perfectly joined because you need to produce 
perfect horizontal lines. So if this is uh, proper, if, if this is straight, then you're going to have proper horizontal lines all the way from the bottom to the top. Okay, this is 90 degrees. It needs to be 90 degrees. Okay. And then we have the adjustable set square. There are also um, fixed set square, which is absolutely fine as well. Uh, I just like the adjustable set square because you don't have to keep uh, many pieces of uh, different different angles. So for the adjustable set square, you can adjust the set square uh, based on whatever angle that you want. Um, I will show you later in the next few weeks on how to use this for isometric. But for now, you do this by you use this by placing the set square uh, onto the T square, and you get this ninety degree line. Okay, so this is going to be horizontal lines, and all the vertical lines will be uh, using the set square. Okay, everything. Next. Of course, pencil set of different grades. You already have this. You know this. You don't have to go into that. Metric scale ruler. Okay. Uh, hopefully, everybody have metric scale ruler. Okay, this is very important. But uh, if you don't have this, you can use other type of scale ruler as well. And what is it used for? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It's not for drawing straight lines. Okay. All your lines must be using either your set square, pretty set square, t square, or rolling ruler. Uh, this scale ruler is specifically for measuring. Okay, for measuring only. I will tell you why. And masking tape, masking tape because you need to tape your paper. Okay, you, you will see the edges of the paper. You need to tape it on the on the board so that it doesn't move. When you work and then you have cartridge paper this is a4 so you can see the size this is a4 and then this is a2 okay eraser of course if you can get the the um, non-dusty ones then you don't need this brush okay this is erasing shield because when you do draftsmanship you need to erase um, all this uh, perfectly so you don't disrupt all the lines that you want and you can only erase you can erase only the ones that you want to erase okay uh, should it be a2 you mean the board no the board does not have to be a2 uh, i don't really care what size it's going to be but you're going to be your uh the paper size that you will be working on is a3 okay so you will use a3 so whatever size that you have, whether it's A3 or A2, A1, or, or you want to buy a proper drafting table so that you can set up in your home, in your home. So yeah, just go and get one. And then of course brush. If you already have the dustless or dust-free eraser, you probably don't need you don't need this brush. Okay. And then this is rolling ruler. Okay, rolling ruler. Try and say it again and again. Rolling ruler. Rolling ruler. Okay, so this is my rolling ruler. You probably can't find this this type of rolling ruler anymore. The, there are now cheaper ones, which cost about six or seven ringgit. Uh, this is good for drawing parallel lines, short parallel lines, without using your t square or z square. Okay, so you can just use this anytime. Okay, right. So as a start for our class. Um, you guys need to use your scale ruler. Okay. You guys need to use your scale ruler. So these are several types of scale ruler. This is my graphical scale ruler that I will use in our lecture. And then um, this is some brand. Uh, you can use either this one, um, the triangular scale ruler, or you can use the fan scale ruler. Okay. Either way, whatever that you, whichever that you want to use, you can use. But please, find the metric scale ruler okay it's okay if you don't know because i'm going to teach you anyway so if you already know then i'm going to go into uh, through the slides much faster if you don't then i'm going to explain you step by step so this is the scale ruler okay so first you notice here this is one to ten or one to one hundred and these are the measurements so if you look at your scale ruler 
Okay, if you look at your scale ruler, you will see the scale here indicated here. This is one to seventy-five. Sorry, the image is reversed on my screen. This is one to twenty, and so on and so forth. Okay, so basically, why I put here one to ten and one to hundred is the same bar. It is the same bar, but you just multiply it by ten. So whatever the unit is, whether it is meter or millimeter, you can just multiply it. Okay, so. For example, this is a rectangle measuring 30 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Okay. And I set it at scale 1 to 100. So you can see here, this edge is at 0. This edge is at 30. Okay. So the length of this rectangle is 30 millimeter and the width is 10 millimeter. Okay. This is at scale 1 to 100. This is how you draw. You measure it using your scale ruler and you can produce that. Now, on the bottom part, we have the same rectangle, 30 by 10 millimeter, okay, the same one, but it is drawn at the scale of 1 to 50, okay, and you, if you look here, this edge is set at 0, and this edge is set at 30, okay, and at scale 1 to 50, this is a 30 by 10 millimeter rectangle. So you can see here that we are using the scale which produce drawings at different scale, different length, different ratio. Okay. So if you were to take a normal ruler, of course, this is going to be like 10 millimeters. And this is probably, sorry, this is going to be 10 units, whatever that is, millimeter. And this is going to be 20. Because scale 1 to 50 is double the size of 1 to 10. Okay. Whatever this measurement is, if this is X, this is 2x. If this, if this is y, this is 2y. Okay, double the size. Let's go into, into this a bit deeper. Okay. So using scale 1 to 100, this is the rectangle that I've shown you just now, 30 by 10 millimeter. And then we compare, this is the same rectangle at 1 to 50 scale. Okay. And then this is the same rectangle at 1 to 25 scale. So you can see that this, this length, sorry, this length is double than this. Okay. And this length is double than that. So you can see the ratio 1 to 100, 1 to 50, 1 to 25, and so on. So the bigger the scale, sorry, the, the smaller the scale ratio, the bigger the object will be drawn. Okay, inversely proportional. So the one unit or one millimeter equals to 25 millimeter so one millimeter in the real world equals to 25 millimeter on paper okay clear if you're not clear just ask me again okay now let's look back at this drawing okay the one that ramesh have shared with us okay look for the declared scale okay look at the declared scale where is it it's on the bottom left ground floor 1 to 100 that is the declared scale for this particular drawing so i've put my scale ruler here okay uh, i'm trying to measure grid 1 and grid 2 so indicated here is 2900 okay so is it true if this scale ruler is proper at 1 to 100 we should get the right measurement so typically uh, just to inform you that in UTM, we use these scales um, as our typical scale. So 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 20, 1 to 25, 1 to 50, 100, 200, 250, 500, and so on. But sometimes we use 1 to 75. Sometimes we use 1 to 125. But um, we don't recommend them anymore. Uh, we Whatever uh, scales that you want to propose, it should be somewhere around this. Now, we zoom in a little bit, okay? So, you see at grid 1, okay, grid 1 and grid 2 is 2,900. So, grid 1 and grid 2, it says here, okay? It says here that it is 2,900 mm. Now, let's look at this. So, I put the scale ruler, I align 0 at grid 1, and then you can see that uh, grid 2 is aligned to just one notch before 30. So you know that this at 1 to 100, this is 1,000 mm, this is 2,000 mm, 
and this is 2900 mm so this way we can confirm that yes i've read it directly and it is at, in fact 2900 mm okay so no more disputes very easy very straightforward 2900 mm and it is also indicated here now i know that at 1 to 100 uh, sorry this drawing is confirmed at 1 to 100 so you can measure everything else okay. whatever 3025 um, 800 1100 if you take the same scale ruler and put it there at 1 to 100 you will be able to get the proper reading okay so if we take the same uh 2900 units so that's grid one and grid two and we draw it in the square so this is what one to 100 looks like and if we were to draw or redraw the, the same square 2900 by 2900 this is at scale 1 to 50 and the same square at 1 to 25 okay so you understand this right so just as a comparison this is my scheduler just now and this is a 2900 by 2900 at 1 to 100 scale so if you take this square and put it anywhere else you can just figure out that 2900 how big it is okay now understanding the plan card you need to produce your plan okay so floor plans are actually a part of a series of sectional drawings okay? so you you look at this uh, particular drawing this is a 3d room which I have cut out the top part of the room. So you don't see it, it's, it's hidden. Okay? If it's like a cake, okay? you take a cake and then you chop off horizontally and you eat the top part. And that's whatever that's left, that's what you see. That's the plan. Okay? So the um, usually we cut at about 1 to 1.5 meters. Okay? 1 to 1.5 meters from the floor. Then the upper side of the building is deliberately hidden, so you can only see the the, the the bottom part from the top. So that is a plan. So imagine you cut a building using lightsaber, and then whatever yang tertinggal tu, whatever that's left, that's the burn mark, the red one. That is what we call a cut line. So you're going to draw this, okay? So how do you want to start your drawing? So this is basically the absolute basic basic or the basic or the basic basic basic, basic. okay can't get any more basic than this if i were to teach this to a 12 year old he or she would be to would be able to understand okay first you do the draft center line okay so the draft center line okay this is very light hopefully you guys can see it okay just draw using blue pencil or whatever this is 4000 by 7000 this is just me giving you an instruction okay 4000 by 7000 so that's just the uh, the draft line at 1 to 50 scale as a reference, okay? And then, you need to draw the wall thickness, okay? I just put the scale ruler here as a reference. So, we want a 150 millimeter brick wall. This is typical. In Malaysia, we use 150 millimeter brick wall. Uh, when I teach you, we just use 150 millimeter brick wall as the basic uh wall thickness okay now you need to draw it on one side 75 millimeter so you need to measure that this is the center line the original center line you need to measure that 75 mm okay and then you need to offset another one 75 mm to the right side and you have to do it all places okay so both sides and then all sides okay so you need to have your center line so i did deliberately left it a bit longer so you can you can refer to it the center line and the wall lines so this is a 150 millimeter brick wall okay. what we do next is to actually draw the wall lines okay so the blue pencil can be disregarded Okay, you, can, you only need to do it very lightly, but what we want to see is the bold black pencil line. Okay, this is your 150 millimeter brick wall. Okay, remember all measurements will refer to center lines. This is even in practice. Okay, when you go outside, if you any of you who mention, let's say for example, Amal Husna, 
mentioned that her room is 4 by 3 and then Carol 2.5 by 3, 3 by 3 and so on and so forth. After this, go and get your measurement tape. Okay? And measure your room from wall to wall. You will notice your room will probably not be 3,000 by 3,000 but instead it's going to be 200 and uh, 2850 by 2850 because there is a wall thickness so the the actual size of your room is measured by the center line so you have to consider the brick thickness okay and then you have to offset 75 mm here and 75 mm here then only you can draw you, you can measure the actual distance uh, between this wall surface and that wall surface and we'll definitely if this is 7000 um i'm sure this is going to return uh 6850 okay so please don't complain to your developer or if you're buying a new house you complain to the seller why is this room measured on paper 4000 by 4000 but i only measure 3850 where's the 150 okay Eh, jangan komplain dekat dia pula, buat malu. Okay. Your room will definitely be smaller than what is specified in the drawings. Because of the brick thickness. The thicker the wall, then the smaller the room will be. So that's why we just use about uh, 150. Sometimes we use partition wall or drywall, which is about 100 mm. Sometimes we need to use um, uh, party walls, which is thicker, about 250, 300 mm and so on and so forth so different wall thickness whatever it is we measure from the center okay there eh? okay so after i've deleted the the blue lines this is what you see four by seven all right notice that the dimensions is still referring to the center lines okay so to continue you notice that we use, I use the cut line at 4B or 5B. This is very thick cut line, okay? But in the actual cut uh, model, we have a window opening and also a door opening. Okay, now we need to do that as well, okay? So at the moment, I put the uh, window opening at 2000 mm, so two meters, and then the door is 900, 0 0.9, okay? So this is the cut that we need to put. So I've cut the wall, okay? So it looks similar here, right? So I've cut the wall to leave an opening. And you can see this is now a projection line, right? This is the standard 2B pencil that I will use. These two will be the standard lines 2B because this is the, the window, uh, the, the, the bottom part underneath the window. Okay, so you need to see the wall, this wall. This is the cut wall, that one. Okay, the thick wall, sorry, the thick line is this red wall because it is being cut. So anything that you do not cut, okay, will be left at projection or standard lines to be. Understand about this one? This is about line width, this is very important because I will show you after this what's going to happen if you mess it up, okay? So this is now the window opening and this is the door opening. I'm not going to draw the door. We'll get into that one bit, okay? Okay, next week we'll do. So there are typical line types that I use uh, that I recommend. Uh, you are welcome to explore your own pencil type. This is not set in stone, this is just a guide, okay? So for example, um, I use five types of lines, so we can see here section cut lines, um, profile line, standard projection, surface texture or hatch, and draft. And you can see the color that I put there. So for the draft line, I use H or something around 2H and preferably use a different color. Okay. Um, so for surface and texture hatch, you use F or B. Uh, set the, the different sets basically uh, are just a, a typical choices that um, I did a survey, I think about three or four years back with my students. So I asked them, what are the sets that you eventually like to use? So these are basically the three big groups. 
So I present this to you so that you can just um, decide which one that you want to use. Okay. All right. So pay attention to the drawing conventions. You look at the line thickness. You look at the tree. You look at the uh, line widths. Okay. And what does this dot 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 uh, oh, sorry, dash, 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 dash line means. Anybody want to venture? Yeah, why is it hidden? Okay, Farrell, it's on the upper, it's on the upper level. Okay, Farrell got it, right? So, these are the staircase that you can see. Okay, you step. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, and then it starts to disappear because it is already on the upper side. So, you don't need to see that you will be able to see that on the next drawing okay on the upper floor so on the lower floor you need to see the the ground okay the the, the floor so when you enter here from the entrance this will be one big clear area okay there will be nothing here so you can set this up as your exhibition area or you can put all your sculptures and some people will use this as a feature wall so this is going to be one big area. So you know that although there are lines here, okay, this is actually on top. This is the floor on top. And probably on, on this area, this is going to be a void. Okay? Void. And this is going to be double volume. So your dining area will actually have a bigger ceiling. Okay? This is probably what it means. All right? So you need to understand about line widths. Look at the line width. Okay? This is lighter because it is not being cut. Okay. This is just furniture, so you don't you don't need to specify the furniture specifically. And there are lines that are uh, uh, standard line and so on. So look at the different line width that he used, different line types that he used, and you need to understand this so that you can communicate this well to the other people. Okay. <clears throat> So convention and detailings are critical. There are thousands of information that need to be understood by all parties reading the drawings. Else, this could happen. Yeah. This is what's going to happen if people do not know how to read your drawing or you messed up your own drawings. What do you think is the problem here? Come on, guys. What do you think? Look at that line. Yeah. This drawing is actually an indicator, okay? So the architect will highlight this area and he will tell people, please look at document, okay? A6.10. So this is the unit number. So this is number two, A6.10. So anybody who wants to know the detail about this particular wall or joints, go refer to that document, okay? So you refer to that document, but the guy who construct this thought you're supposed to draw this so this is what happened so look at the cut on the staircase okay and then the cut here that circular cut there yeah. so you can barely see here a6.10 so they actually draw this entire thing so this is so funny we, we laugh and laugh about this one uh, i don't know where this happened probably not in nature okay so nampak tak? if people do not understand your drawing this is what's going to happen okay or this okay what's wrong with the staircase tell me what's wrong with the staircase okay look at this how do the, how the hell do you get up there? Okay, panda panda like do. Okay, so this is gonna be a problem for you for people to use it. Look, there's a proper door there. There's a landing, but how the hell are you gonna go down there? So panda panda like do. Okay, and another one. Yeah. So this is revision cloud. Okay, dalam AutoCAD or dalam drawings, you just scribble something. Okay please look into this and change it now this guy actually cut okay cut the entire thing according to the uh drawing so he thought that oh you got you have to cut this out so they cut lah. okay so that is what happens when people do not understand your drawings 
Okay, or probably people who are reading the drawings do not understand the conventions that we use. So you have to understand that in architecture, there's a huge, uh, there's a new set of language that you have never explored before. Okay, because when 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 you grow up, you probably speak one or two languages or maybe three languages. Okay, and then you you start to be able to converse in them. Then you start to learn another language, which is mathematical language. Okay, math is very different. Now. What you see here is a different language. It is a visual communication language, an architectural language. So you see here, this revision cloud is something that we architects always do. We tell people, okay, uh, probably I tell to my subordinates, please revise this kitchen, uh, please redesign it again. But if somebody were to pick this up, let's say the builder, and try to translate this, he would be producing something like this, some some rubbish like this and then cut and spend hours and hours because this is not easy okay i can tell you this is not easy you spend hours and hours cutting this piece okay understand okay hopefully you understand now what are you supposed to do okay tasks and expected outcome so i'm sure all of you have seen the file that i've shared on e-learning so this is the task that you need to do. You need to reproduce this set of drawings in 1 to 50 on A3. Okay. So there is a PDF that I have shared. Uh, in the PDF, there are several pages. You look at page, I think, 6 to 8 or something, 5 to 7 or 6 to 8. You will see this set of drawings. Okay. Only print this one out. Okay. You need to print this one out at 1 to 1 scale. So get your printer, print at one-to-one -one or 100% scale. Do not change, do not use scale to fit, do not use scale to paper or whatever. It must be printed at one to 100 scale, oh, sorry, one-to-one -one or 100% scale. And if you successful to print it, take your scale ruler, okay? Look for one to 200, okay? The scale is one to 200 and try to measure the length of the building. Sorry, 1 to 200, you, you find 9.5 meters and then on paper, you find 1 to 50. Okay, this is 1 to 50, that's going to be 9.5 meters. So your drawing will be that long. Okay, on an A3 okay. or an A4. So if you take an A4, that's about the length of your building. Okay, 9.5. Uh, meters in 1 to 50 scale. Okay. You only need to print these three sheets because these are all measured properly and printed. At, if you print it properly, it will measure at 1 to 200 scale properly. Okay. And there are some also some references also. This is 3000 mm, this is 6000 mm. So you can just take your scheduler and measure that. If it's different, then you need to fit the scale properly. Okay. Okay, previously, um, this is the example of an outcome that you need to produce. But back then, it was done in 1 to 100. Okay, and this is an A3 paper. So for an A3 paper, you can fit all these drawings inside. However, for you guys, I worry that if you do it in 1 to 100 scale, you might skip some of the details. Okay. And it's going to be hard for you to pick up because I am not there to show you what's wrong with your drawing. So what I'm going to do is that, is that I'm going to ask you to keep using the A3 paper, but draw it in 1 to 50. Okay? 1 to 50, not 1 to 100. This is supposed to be the example sheet. Okay? You have the title block here. Okay, name, metric, session, date, revision, and so on. Uh, but instead of doing it in 1 to 100 scale, I want you to do in 150 scale, okay? Satu nisbah 50. 150. So you can see here, um, there are four drawings. So this is one drawing, 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 drawing. And this, these drawings are drawn on one A3 sheet. So please differentiate. Eh? This is your sheet, okay? Sheet of paper. And this is a drawing. Sometimes we have one drawings per sheet. Sometimes we have multiple drawings such as this in one particular sheet. Okay. 
Okay. So this is another example. So roof plan, this one, south elevation and east elevation. And then we have um, isometric. So this is isometric internal, external. This is isometric at level zero. This is isometric at level one. And also um, internal section. So you're going to cut somewhere on the section line and do that. So you can see if we go back, you see the reference section line here will cut on the window and this one will cut at the staircase. Okay, you need to put those, you need to be able to see this staircase. Okay, and door on the upstairs, right? And you should be able to see the window here. Okay, this is section Y, Y, which is the short section, and this is X, X, which is the longitudinal section. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> and then we have the one point perspective that you need to produce. Okay, there are methods for this one. I will go into detail in the later weeks. And you have a two point perspective, which I will also instruct you specifically in the later weeks. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Questions. Can I make a video example for this task? <laughs> Yes, I can, but later, okay? I want you to do first, okay? All right, so do first. What I do, okay? It's like riding a bicycle. So you just go and ride the bicycle, okay? Try and try and try again. You probably will fall off a few times. Then I will tell you what's wrong next week. Do we need to print it on A4 to do the drawing in A3? Well, you have to measure it. You have to measure it because there are plenty of things in here. Okay. This is just the general uh, dimensions. 2,500, 4,500, 2,500, and so on. But what about this? What about this length? What about the length of the staircase? There are many things that you don't know. So you need to print this. You need to print this in A4 so that you can take your scale ruler and measure it. Okay, you need to do this. You measure this and then you go back on your paper and take 1 to 50 and draw 9.5. You measure it again in your uh, A4, this is 2.5 and then you take 1 to 50, draw 2.5 on paper. So it's a process. You have to measure and then you have to draw. You measure, you draw, measure, you draw. At the moment, this is just reproduction on a different scale, which is easy. You haven't gone into the designing part. Because if you were to design and learn how to draw at the same time, it's going to be a nightmare for you. So I've made it as, as easy as possible for you guys. There is a very specific uh, drawings that I want you to produce, which is this, the, the drawings that you see on screen. And then all you need to do is just to measure it. Okay, and then draw it on a different scale. So measure it 1 to 200, draw 1 to 50. Measure 1 to 200, draw 1 to 50. Um, in the slide, there's two colors uh, at level 1. So do we need to use different hatching styles? For this drawing, the, the, the purple... The blue and, and green one. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, you don't need to. This is just for me to indicate the floor side floor areas and so on um if you want if you want to draw a different scale sorry a different floor material yes you can you can do let's say family area using marble and then balcony you use homogeneous tiles on the ground floor you want to use timber angle at 45 degrees blah 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 so this is totally up to you that one that one is uh, something of your choice, but do remember if you get too happy drawing the plan, you will need to repeat the same thing on the other drawing. So, for example, if you accidentally design a fully rendered marble floor on the ground floor plan, <laughs> you need to draw it the same one in perspective. Okay, same floor. 
Okay. So be careful at what you wish for. Look at this uh, couch. Okay. Look at the angle. Right. That is because that couch is placed like that on plan. Okay. So anything that you see on plan must be able to be seen in other drawings as well. Okay. Couch. All right. So if you don't have any more questions, um, if you do have further questions, please ask me on WhatsApp group. Okay. So you can just screenshot any of the things that you don't understand and then we can uh, speak further on that one later. Okay. So how many students quit architecture? <laughs> Do you want to know? Do you really want to know? <laughs> okay, guys. Enough rambling. So if there is no more questions, thank you very much for attending this class. Um, hope to see you guys next week. I will try to provide uh, an instructional video on first on the scale bar. So because that one needs to be done first so that is it, it will be easy for me to evaluate your work later on uh do the scale bar first and then i'll try and finish the step by step on the draftmanship uh hopefully by next week all right see you guys next week